Hey, 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 everyone. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Welcome to uh, the fourth installment of Spice's Mystery Guest. We are super excited to be with you tonight. It's been a whole month, right? So tonight, um, if you're joining us live right now, just pop us a comment, say hi, tell us where you're watching from. And if you're watching later, let us know that you're there too. Along the way, if you're watching and you have any questions for our mystery guest, please pop those in the chat. We'll be watching that also, and we'll do our best to answer them if we have some time. So let's just get on with it, shall we? Tonight's mystery guest is an accomplished speaker, an author, and a singer. Please give a warm welcome for Jody Bach. There she is. Hi, Hi everybody. And look, at, we planned this, didn't we, you guys? I feel like I'm one of the spy girls. <laughs> You yes. are. You are. You are. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Jody. It's so great to see you. Now, as Liz said, you are a singer, but we want to know all about the music in your life. Do you play instruments? And most important, what brought you to Barbershop? So, y'all yeah, just want me to jump right in and tell you those? Jump right in. <laughs> so, yes, I do play instruments, actually. Um, I started piano lessons when I was five because my mom didn't know what to do with me because I was a precocious little kid who learned to read really early. So I really hated piano lessons most of the time. And I took 12 years of lessons, which you would think I would be really, really good. But I learned that my mom used to say practice makes perfect, Jody. No, perfect practice makes perfect. And I did not practice perfectly. <laughs> so I do not play perfectly. But I can pick out a few things. I also took guitar lessons in junior high. And during COVID, I taught myself the ukulele. So yeah, and I played clarinet and bass clarinet in high school band as well. So that's my musical background. And what was the other question, Jan? Well, what brought you to barbershop? Brought, oh, okay. I don't think any of you know this. My uncle, my mom's brother, Eugene, sang in a barbershop quartet with Fred hey. King. Oh, hey. oh. <laughs> that's not what brought me to barbershop because I learned that later. But I, um, when I was 10 years old, my grandma and grandpa had their 50th wedding anniversary and my uncle Eugene my mom's brother and his three three of his four kids came from Baltimore for that and they sang they were all standing my cousins are older than I am but my uncle and then my girl cousin and two boy cousins were singing in the basement and they were singing this I don't know it was like without instruments they were just singing and I there was four parts and I'm 10 years old and I'm like I was just in awe and that was barbershop and they were singing i believe i believe for every drop of rain that's what they sang i still remember to this day and they also sang i feel a song coming on and those two songs were just in my memory still and i had this little like a um, plastic tape recorder <laughs> 10 you know 10 right and i'm like taping and i have the, i still have the cassette oh i'm so so good oh. so that's when I first learned about barbershop but I actually joined the Fargo chorus mm -hmm. in oh my goodness 90 1990 uh, because I heard them singing in the mall they were singing in the mall and I just went oh this is I think this is like that I think this is like that <laughs> and I um I joined on a guest night and the rest is history yes oh that's awesome that is um is your is your uncle as wild and crazy as freddie king is well both of them are probably singing in heaven right now yeah, <laughs> yeah probably <laughs> well it was but oh Freddie, i Freddie think was he was crazy he was fun with his yeah. teeth yeah <laughs> i'm i'm pretty sure they probably were equally as crazy yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> so uh jody yeah you are an author mm -hmm. and we would like to hear a little bit about your books and what inspired you to write Mm. And uh, did you write growing up? I guess if you read a lot, maybe you were a writer um, also. So uh, what, what, how, just tell us about that little process. Well, I was um, a writing major in college, uh, mm. English writing major, wow. and I was more of a journalist then. So I was a sports journalist. That was my first job. And I didn't really ever anticipate that I would be an author of any books until a friend of mine asked if I would write a chapter in a compilation book that was being put out by one of her friends. And so I wrote a chapter and they said, we want, I don't know, 
200 words or whatever it was. And I didn't know what that meant. So I just wrote and I submitted it. And she said, well, Jody, this was like 12,000 words. No, not quite that many, but this is way <laughs> too many words and we'll, we'll cut it down. But I think you have a book in you. And that was the first I really thought about it. So I didn't know how to write a book. I had no idea how do you write a book or what you do if you write a book. Cause you have to, I mean, you can write all you want, but you have to, it has to become a book. So I just thought of, you have to get an um, a editor and you have to get a publisher and you have to do all this stuff. And I thought, well, I'll just do it myself. So I just started my own publishing company because I don't know how to do the details. I just figured it out myself. So I bought 10, you, you have, at the time you had to buy 10 ISBN numbers, which is the number that goes on the book when you see the little barcode. Mm -hmm. And I bought a pack of 10. So to me, then that means that at someday, eventually there might be 10 books. So I've not written 10 yet, but I have quite a few and I've used many of those ISBNs and my own publishing company. And I just sort of figured it out. So wow. um, my first yes. book, I talked, I have a story in my first book about our chorus, actually, our, our former director, but um, yeah, a little story about us. Yeah. So fun. I have the next question for you, but first I want to remind anybody who's joining us live to type your questions on Facebook and we'll keep an eye out for those so we can ask Jody what you want to know. Okay. What I want to know, Jody, is where did your podcast come from and what things do you talk about there? Oh, good question. I this is my second pod, uh, third maybe podcast. Um, back in uh, April of this past year, as we know the, how the year was, I was really stuck in my business and I hired a marketing coach and my marketing coach uh, kindly <laughs> suggested that I retire my company. Um, my company was named Box Office. My last name is Bach and Box Office was the name of my company since 2005. And he said, as I was working with him, I think that's a former you, Jody. That's a former you. Mm -hmm. I think you need to retire that because it was cute for the time, but you're somebody new. And he, so part of the, the work I did with him was to write a course. And before you could write the course with him, you had to get a podcast. And so he helped me come up with a name. And if you're watching, you can see um, it's kind of, it, it, Get Real is the name of the podcast. And that's what that says behind me. But he helped me with that whole formulation of, of what's my message, who am I, what is the what what does the world need to know through me, and we came up with Circle Up and Get Real, which is the name of my podcast, and Real is an acronym for Radical, Energized, Authentic, and Learning Focused, because the older I get, I think we all can say this: the older we get, hopefully the wiser we get, and when we get wiser, we can share wisdom right so when you circle up with your people you can get real with them and you don't really have to have all the pretenses you thought you did when you were younger um, you can let your hair go gray which i did through the covid as well and a lot of things just became more um more important that i didn't think were as important when i was younger and so the podcast is all about what getting real about a topic. That's usually what it says. Getting real about learning, getting real about persistence was the one I released today. Um, sometimes I have guests, but lately, since I have a new job in the last five weeks, I haven't had guests, but I always do a podcast once a week. So there's just a thought about something about getting real. Very cool. I think Very podcasts cool. are amazing. Like I just have the most respect for people who have something to share valuable information every week. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if I could do that. Well, Angela, I think you're giving me a lot of credit. You're, you're assuming it's valuable. I don't know. Well, it is. <laughs> I just talk. I just well, I, I, it. And I think it's, I will cool. say it's valuable. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> okay. So now I think we're going to transition to, I think what's the most important question of the night. Mm. Um, we know that you are a grill master. And this is for a Facebook land out there. You can answer this question too. Is the word kebab or shish kebab? Yeah. What is the right word? <laughs> well, the original, and I will tell you, I actually kind of know this. You're not gonna, I, <laughs> I feel a little Cliff, Cliff Clavenish right now. <laughs> you know, Cliff Claven knows something about everything. But I have friends from Iran, and I know it's shish kebab is it the is. official term. But what is the kebab is then? What's, what is, is kebab short, just it's slang? Short. Kebab, okay. shish kebab, kebab. It's just short for just... shish kebab. Okay. Do you have a favorite recipe? I know I see your pictures on Facebook all the time of your <laughs> awesome shish kebabs. What's your favorite marinade <laughs> so, or kind of seasoning? It's not that complicated. It's really simple. I, I just 
kind of put them in olive oil and then shake them up. And then I have the seasoning called CJ seasoning. My friend Josh is the J of CJ's and it's local. And I shake that on there and then shake them up in like a Tupperware. And so they're coated with this CJ seasoning or Paul Prudhomme's vegetable seasoning. Hmm. So you can find that in any grocery store, but that it's really that simple. Olive oil and CJ seasoning or Paul Prudhomme seasoning. And then I just, I learned this last time, which you might've seen if I put them on Facebook, <laughs> a friend of mine who's a chef said, Jody, you might want to consider putting all of your like vegetables and like meats together on one kebab <laughs> because then they'll cook differently. And I, well, sure, but they're not pretty then. They're boring. Right. right. So, so there's something about the aesthetic of this that is maybe more important than actually how they taste, but they do taste great too. Nice. Well, I'm so glad we have that straightened out. That was like a big deal. <laughs> uh, but now that that's straightened out, we want to know about your sports history because we know that you have some sort of big sports history, but we don't want to know more about it. Wow. Okay. Uh, well, I, I decided to play basketball when I was in high school and I ended up playing in college as well. And I played at Concordia College in Moorhead. And my freshman year, we were the national champions. So I was the sixth player. I, I was on the all state team and all tournament team. And the, on the, uh, that as a freshman, I was really fortunate. And I had great seniors. I was the only mm -hmm. freshman. And what do you do after you win the national championship as a freshman? Right. I mean, there's really, right. so we never really accomplished that again, but um, I was a two-time All-American and I had a lot of fun. I played in Europe for five weeks um, between my freshman and sophomore years. Uh, we played 12 games against the national teams in Europe, many countries. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was, it was an, a, a really fun time in my life. So wow. Wow, that's super exciting. Mm -hmm. Are you still like scorekeep or something? Yeah. So I'm the head scorekeeper for the NDSU Bison women's and men's basketball teams. And that's a, I was the sports information director at North Dakota state for a really short amount of time. It was my dream job. And I got my dream job at 25 years of age and I hated it so much. It was the worst thing ever. I did it for like six months and I hated it because it made my love of sports a job. And I, I just couldn't do it. So I, I got a different job, but I stayed on as the statistician and I moved my way up and I became the head scorekeeper six or seven or eight years ago. So, and do you love that? I do. That is so much fun. You're right at, you're right at yeah. half court. I wear the striped shirt. I'm, I'm <laughs> official. It's, it's really fun. I totally so see they, you out there. They come to you in the game for any reason? They're like, yeah, they do. they do. They do. And and I, I used to get a little freaked out about that because, you know, you're like, oh, my God. But now I'm like, I'm so confident. I know. I'm right. And once in a while, I'm not right, but not very often. I'm not, they have to defer to me because I'm the official scorekeeper. So, Ooh. yeah, I can remember maybe one or two times when I got it wrong, but they had to go with what I had. As long as you're oh. confident, they believe. I, know, right? I mean, just be confident, like singing, right? right? Just like mm -hmm. singing. You're mm -hmm. like, Heidi, the lead's always right, right? That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> so they say. Don't don't they so they say. say. <laughs> we love Heidi. She is always right. Yes, she is. <laughs> Until Liz comes along. <laughs> the baritone sets you straight, you know? I feel like we've taken a turn to interviewing each other. So right. <laughs> bring it back <laughs> to Jody. <laughs> Jody, I would love to hear about your most memorable musical moments mm -hmm. um when i oh golly i don't remember what year it was but i was probably 30 maybe i went with some friends to new york and i got to see phantom of the opera on broadway and i remember being in the theater the majestic theater and i i was so into that that musical at the end I just had tears streaming down my face and I didn't I was I didn't know where I was it was the weirdest oh. thing and I remember turning to and then I remembered you know I was with friends and I turned to my friend and go do people cry at this <laughs> and she's like well I, yeah apparently here you are you know? and I'm like that was I I, I was get goosebumps just thinking about that and I had wow. never been to anything like that before, anything. And that was just, I mean, the chandelier comes crashing in and oh my goodness, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And and funny enough, later, um, two years ago, I think, I met Sandra Joseph, who was the longest playing um, Christine on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And I know her now. 
I mean, I've met her a couple of times and, and she, wow. I, wow. There's just so much I could say about that. And just when you are in the presence of somebody, even like this close, well, I'm not with you personally, but I mean, look as close as you can be with somebody when you're like in their physical presence and you hear that coming out of their mouths and their soul, and you hear her singing Phantom of the Opera in person, like in a room of 50 people. I'm not kidding you. It is just yeah. like amazing. Do you get well, chills every time you I hear songs? I, I do. I do. And Phantom for some, well, obviously for that reason, probably it's just, it just always hits me every time I hear it. I, I go back there and I'm like the awe I felt um, just being there. I had never been any place like that. It's like the, this is going to sound funny, but the first time I flew in an airplane and I saw um, palm trees, it was the same feeling. It's like, they exist in real life. <laughs> So it was so amazing. So oh, that's, yeah, that's that was yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, are there any Facebook questions or anything? No, or we have a or very anything? quiet Facebook group. Or Facebook isn't share, showing me comments. I I see nothing. Oh, I have. I see one. Oh, you do. Yeah. So it's from, my side. I'm not seeing them. Yeah, from Karen Olson. She wants to know what is bubbling up for your next book topic. Ooh. Ooh. That's a great one. That's a great one, Karen. I, you know, I'm sure there's something. I'm in, I'm in the middle of a really interesting transition right now, and and I think Karen, you you'll appreciate this. Uh, it's it's more of a spiritual um, manifestation period I'm in right now, where like um, things can happen in real life when you look for them. And I think it'll be something like that. Like I was telling you guys before we went live here about when my mom died. And I don't know if I told you that story. When my mom actually died, this happened on February 13th. Um, uh, the week before I was, I, I told you I le learned to play the ukulele and I would sing You Are My Sunshine all the time. That was the easiest one to sing. And she knew that one. And I, I would think sometimes we'd laugh about how, mom, I'm going to play it again. I know you hate the ukulele. And she'd go, no, no, no she's so sweet. It's fine. You know, and we'd sing. And about three days before she ended up dying, I said to her, now, when you get there, I want a sign. I want a sign. And I want you to make it so obvious I can't miss it. And, you know, she wasn't responsive by then, but I knew she could hear. And I said, okay, so if we don't come up with something, let's just call it sunshine. Let's just say it's going to be sunshine. Okay. So mom, until you get something better, I'll just make it be sunshine. And uh, Saturday morning, the 13th, I was driving to see her like I went every day and I turned the corner and I got this huge sunrise in my rear view mirror and I looked down at my dash clock and it was 7 44 a.m and I turned into the parking lot and I checked in and I went into a room and the nurse was coming out shaking her head I said what do you mean and she goes she's gone and I said tell me what happened and she said I, I went in to see her and uh, she was breathing funny. So I went to get my stethoscope and I said, do you know what time that was? And she said, well, yeah, because she's got that digital clock right next to her. And it was 742. And I said, okay. And then she came back in and she said that she took one big breath and she was gone. And I said, what time? She said 744. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So things like that, things like that, that you just, they're here all the time. We just aren't always looking for them. And so Karen, it might be something like that, you know, some kind of what, what's possible if we condition ourselves to see it, that might be the next book, maybe. That would be so cool. Yeah. Put me on the pre-order list. Okay. Okay. <laughs> me too, me too. Well, um, Jody, it's just really been great having you with us tonight. And uh, we do have one final question and our, our big question is always, we wonder if you have any spice advice. I love that. <laughs> I, I do have spice advice. Um, my journey right now has taken me into a space of being real, as I was telling you, being real, being authentic. And um, if I could go back and tell myself anything, it would be to be who you are. Be you, because nobody else can be you. And, and we hear that all the time. And it sounds like, you know, just talk at some point. But if you really connect with that, my favorite, absolute favorite quote is by Ralph Waldo Emerson. And it might sound a little weird, but let me just share it with you because it's really important to me. A foolish consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds adored by little statesmen and philosophers and divines. 
With consistency, a great soul has simply nothing to do. He may as well concern himself with his shadow on the wall. Speak what you think in hard words today and tomorrow. Speak what tomorrow thinks in hard words again, even though it contradict everything you said today. Ah, so you shall be sure to be misunderstood. Is it so bad then to be misunderstood? Pythagoras was misunderstood and Socrates and Jesus and Luther and Copernicus and Galileo and every pure and wise spirit that ever took flesh. To be great is to be misunderstood. So just be you and nothing else matters. People outside of you don't matter. Be you. That's my spice advice. That's awesome. Spice wow. advice. That is I love that. Powerful. I want to wow. get that. Is powerful. I want to get that quote and do it in needlepoint or something. I don't know. <laughs> no, I love that. Yes, it should be a needlepoint. It absolutely should be a needlepoint. <laughs> it's been fantastic visiting with you this evening. And for all of our Facebook friends out there, thank you for joining us. We'd like you to mark your calendars with June 24th when we have our next Spice Mystery Guest. We would like you to join us at that time. So now we'll say good night and we'll see you then. Yay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.